Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, so for today's daily sketch, I'm gonna do a longer format drawing uh, similar to this one, so much more rendered than my previous videos. Uh, and I'm gonna stick with the fantasy theme and you guys can watch me kind of go through um, doing a drawing like this. So the initial approach to a drawing like this, because a lot of times getting started is the hardest part. And I have an idea in my head um, how the figures and stuff are composed. I try and visualize that. I try and see it in my mind. Um, I kind of have, I always try and flush out kind of a main character. In this case, I'm gonna do another female uh, fantasy type character and I wanna have some little creatures around her. Uh, so her pose is going to be the main uh, part. Once I kind of figure that uh, central pose out, all the little guys I add around will be super easy. I can kind of uh, do that as I go. So I'm thinking that I have a couple ideas in my head. Either she's going to be kneeling or in a very dramatic, like maybe she's a witch. So her arms may be out. And yeah, let's let's go with that. That'll be simple. So I'm gonna have her head kind of up here like this. Um, I do this uh, straight across jawline right here. Um, and the ear is real low on the head down here, okay? And I do this, like you wanna draw the jawline as a pointy chin, uh, but when someone's looking down at you, um, the jawline, the chin, it's more of a uh, flat straight across uh, perspective. So once I kind of get that, then it's the chest like this, and I'll go from there. I always do the rib cage. Uh, where the rib cage is at shows me kind of uh, where to place, place the breasts, and it also shows me that upward angle on the ribs, kind of wraps around like this. And I'm, I'm just, with the big pan, I can't erase it. I'm just doing real light lines, kind of like this. Um, and then I'm gonna have her arms kind of behind her, coming down, and then forearms kind of coming out at you a little bit. I like foreshortening arms. I feel like it brings the character into the foreground a little bit, adds more of a dynamic, um, composition and just fills up the space three-dimensionally better, which I like. So for the hands, let's, do I want her holding something? Um, or do I want them open? So these are kind of just the thoughts I have in my head right now. I always try and do a little bit of twist in the hips. So instead of a waist that goes straight across, like an angle, and a lot of times that angle is presented in the shoulders as well. So um, I'll either, so if the shoulder is up on the right side, generally I have it going down on the hips. So there's a little bit of a twist or a pinch in the hips. I come straight out with that first hip and kind of down like this. And that just adds so much like more of a natural um, pose to the body. And then I think I'll have this leg kind of coming across in the front like this. And then maybe this one kind of stepping back. Leg really coming forward at you. And then I'll have the toe turn out. So coming out this direction versus pointing uh, this way. It helps balance the figure. I am going to do a harder open hand pose on this one, I've decided, even though you know this is a longer format video, um, so I can spend a little bit more time getting it right. Uh, I haven't considered what she's wearing yet um, at this stage of the drawing. So I will uh, kind of solve that after I get 
the pose figured out. Because a lot of times, like how clothing is draped on her or, her or the things I add, I want to fill up this negative space and see where I might be able to add cool design and things like that. Uh, this leg, I'm going to have kind of coming behind. And I'm going to have this foot and this knee really like, kind of like a ballerina almost. Like really coming out this direction. So an interesting pose. I like this pose so far. That knee. Um, obviously you can see I do pretty decent hips on her. I like uh, very hourglass shaped uh, female figures. Um, so yeah, I could even accentuate that even a little bit more. And so for the hand, let's see, open palm. A lot of times I just figure this stuff out. I know there's always like, uh, like tutorials on how to do hands and things like that. I think of the hand as um, like noodles for the fingers. And I always think of the part of the hand that's really coming out at you first, which is the finger in this case. There we go. And the thumb is kind of hidden behind these front hands or front fingers right here. And the palm is laying flat. So I know it's like a flat cylinder coming or a, a flat square kind of coming out at you. And I like to err on the side of larger uh, hand like fingers and stuff when they are coming out at you like that. It just adds a little bit more dynamic. This finger I think might well to be flattened out a bit just to spread them out that one's okay <clears throat> thumbs back here I do have a white out in case I want to change anything because that hand is a little big but I think this hand I will make, ha I'll give her something in this hand. So the knuckle, I always make my first knuckle sticking out a little bit further. I, I think I stole that from Jim Lee does that a lot in his comic book illustrations. I just like the way it looks. The knuckles have a slight slope to them. They're never straight across like a square. I don't want this too angled though because I want her I want this to have some space I don't want to get too close to the edge over here and I think I'll make this kind of like a cool um, scepter similar to what I did on that last one okay so I like the pose um, I think that is a pretty good start to everything, uh, and I think I can make a decent drawing out of that.
Okay, so on this hand, I don't like the angle of this this hand right here, this finger. So I'm gonna make this actually my pinky finger, and then I'm gonna have one more finger coming out over here. And I did that because I just didn't like the angle right here. I felt like it didn't make a lot of sense. So I can hide that. I'll just add some like fabric right there. And now this is gonna be my pinky finger. And I'm gonna make it kind of curling around. I'm gonna take my white out just to remind myself of what I did right there. And we will see if that will work a little bit better. So you can see, just kind of got the pinky like this. I think I need to do it with this finger too, so it's more like, like that. So let's have that finger come across as well. And I think that will look a million times better. Okay, and that's, so I sh you know, I would suggest for sure doing a reference on something like that. I'm gonna give her kind of like bandage wraps and this is too, I got a little bit too much, um, like the uh, line work in there and I think that will just help to um, hide some of that a little bit. And I'll, as this drawing goes on, like the previous drawing you saw, I had plenty of things just like that. Uh, so now we get to do the kind of fun part and design the outfit for her. Um, I already kind of thought of this, that I want like a big shoulder uh, fur kind of that comes around and wraps around her chest right here. And it comes across over onto this side. Now her breasts, like you've got to think of how they rest on the rib cage. This is something that is very difficult to make look natural and not like she has fake, you know, she's a fantasy character. They don't have very many plastic surgeon, surgeons uh, in fantasy worlds. So I like them to be a little bit more realistic, believable. Um, but yeah, I like to really go big when I do things like this fur over here. So my first initial pass on this, I just didn't feel like was big enough. I really want it to kind of rest across her chest here. But I think that'll, uh, be pretty sweet. So now let's do her face real quick. I should have, normally I do this sooner. I kind of figure out where my chin is, the mouth. I put the mouth in like this after I kind of figure out how far I want it off that chin. I might add a little bit of shading like this. So, and this is going to be an all big pin illustration. I'm going to give her some big old earrings. And then the next big thing is hairstyle. So she's got this big fur coat thing on the side. Um, Let's see, do I want to do a huge style of hair? Ooh, I know, I'm gonna give her asymmetric. I'm gonna balance this big thing over here with hair that kind of like swoops to one side, like this. And that'll kind of balance this thing out a little bit and give her weight on that side. And I don't, this is a pretty unique hairstyle for me, so I like it. I'm gonna have it kind of spike out on the sides. I think that'll be real cool. Swoop across the front and be real close on this side over here. Now we got the nose. Always do the nose as close to the lips as possible. I always feel like when I make a mistake there, it's because I make the nose too high. Um, Give her kind of a little smirk and then 
place the eyes. So when somebody's hair or face is angled upward like this, generally you're gonna get a real flat lower eyelid. And I'm gonna have her looking down at us. So her eyes are on that lower line. She has no eyebrows right now. Maybe I should, I don't know. No, she needs eyebrows. So the heavy eyeliner just helps your character look more feminine. It's kind of a cheat. I don't know if it's a cheat, but it's a, uh, it's just what I have to do. <laughs> okay, so. Drop the eyebrows in. And bam. Um, around that jaw out. One thing that can happen on this type of drawing when the chin is flat like that is you can accidentally give them too much of a masculine jawline. Um, so rounding that out. But I think she looks pretty feminine. I like the way she looks. Um, so I feel like I, I got that down pretty good. Um, and I'll, I'll be adding little details throughout this whole drawing that give it a lot of you know, character and things like that too. So, uh, but what I plan on doing in these larger or longer format videos is, um, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit, uh, and that way, you know, the video isn't like the full hour long time period that it takes me to draw this. So you guys, I'll just talk of, um, about parts of the video where I'm working on something. Uh, specific and that I think you guys should definitely see me do so her outfit um, I think I'm gonna have her top kind of swoop in like this breast line coming through and then I think I'm gonna do this will be kind of interesting I'm gonna do like a corset type thing right here that comes up high and this is where you get to be I love this part of the drawing where you get to be super creative this might actually be my favorite part of a drawing is when I'm designing the outfit and the clothes so this corset I want to come through the middle like this but then I want it to kind of like angle out and down so Gonna come out like this. And then um, for her pants, I'm gonna have her pants be a little bit low so that we have a nice little triangle right there. And I'm gonna give her Actually, I'm going to make her legs skin colored. So these will be like short. Actually, maybe uh, that might be kind of cool. I don't know. Uh, maybe I'll do that right here. Okay, so I want to continue this fur somewhere. So I'm going to give her a really big fur like knee pad things like on her boots. And then I'm going to have the laces kind of come down like this. And then this knee pad comes over here. And this will give me some nice contrast between like the skin on her legs. Real simple, not a lot of detail. And then these big furry uh, pieces from her outfit. Do some laces across here. <clears throat> Okay, so I've got pretty much her down. Now it's time to fill in some of the creatures that go in behind her. Um, I'm gonna do some kind of different, like skeleton looking guys. Uh, the last one, the, the drawing I showed you at the beginning was she was kind of more of nature, maybe wooded creatures, things made of wood. 
things like this. Uh, this lady, I think I'm gonna make just creatures made of like bones and sticks and things like that. And I'm just, with them I can be extremely liberal with the poses because, you know, I'll just turn them into something cool. This little guy is kind of crawling over the edge here. And um, these are some of my favorite little dudes to draw for sure. Um, when I get to do little creatures and stuff. Cause I get to really mess with the forms and really get creative with um, the different types of like creatures I'm doing. And the more creative I'm, I am with these, generally the better they turn out. Just cause they can be super interesting. Like this guy can have, uh, they don't have to be anatomically correct. Like a lot of times, like this guy is gonna have like maybe a big chunk of wood on one side of his head and maybe a skull for over here. Maybe she combined like some bark and like just a skull for his face. And this is the part of drawing when you've drawn enough. This is my favorite kind of uh like reason to build skill is so that you can just like draw like this and not, you know, like draw whatever you want. Like it's the only limitation. And that's always been my goal is to have no limitations to my imagination. So when I sit down and I want to draw something, I can draw it and not have to worry about like, oh, I don't know how to draw that or I'm limited in what I can do those kind of things. Give him some swirls on that bark. This is gonna be like a really big shoulder over here. So yeah, kind of weirdly interesting guy. I'm gonna make this whole right side of him. Like, like I said, these guys I like to make non-anatomically correct. So he's got this big weird head shape thing. So he's kind of creeping up behind. Now the thing is, is when I do little creatures like this, uh, I like to really mix it up. So I'm gonna do a really weird, uh, weird one right here with like a baby body, like really creepy. And this one's kind of coming up behind too. And this one's gonna have very simple, simple features. Still a skeleton face, maybe a smile, there you go. But definitely a different uh, size, so a variation in the size just to make things kind of interesting. Like these are all weird little puppets that she's making. Give him like a big knot right in the middle. Little hands, little creepy hands on him. And let's give him a, like a bushy, like fur piece of head. Maybe she kills little forest creatures too. Um, and pieces them together on these guys as well. So for maybe one down here, maybe I'll do a, um, like a animal skull as part of it. So we'll give it this. I got a lot more space over in this area. So we'll make a tall one. Give it, and I'm not too worried about, um, about making it like correct, but I'm kind of basing this on some deer skulls that I remember. So huge nose cavities right here. And then we'll give it big ol' like buck teeth. Like it's an herbivore skull. Fill in the dark spots just to help us kind of see this thing. And then maybe, uh, yeah, so she kills some, some forest creatures. So 
This one's gonna have kind of some plumage coming out over here. Some feathers on this side. Um, this is where, you know, like I said, it's like, get as creative as your skills allow you to get. And as long as, I'm gonna give it a big neck, like a horse neck. That'll be creepy. Just wanted to kind of scoop around. Arms come dangling down in the front. He's in the belly that turns kind of under him. Hands long, skinny fingers. That is creepy. This is all gonna be kind of made of wood. So playing together, I'll fill in these dark cavities in here as well as I go a little further and define the shapes. That's bugging me a little bit. I have this arm come out and then just kind of hinge down. Um, so when I'm doing little dudes like this, a lot of times, sometimes I get the anatomy better on some of these smaller guys uh, because I'm just letting the form kind of take a life of its own and just blocking shapes in. I feel like a lot of times I'll, like I said, achieve better form when I'm not as worried about it turning out perfect, if that makes any sense. Okay, so got those kind of flushed out. Um, got to do one more little guy over here. Let's let's make it a, a big old, ooh, let's make it just a big old pile of sludge or something kind of coming over. Still give it that skull so it keeps the theme of um, have like a tongue hanging down. Like that. I don't have to get worry about getting too detailed, but this thing is just like a pile of bones. I'll do some jagged stuff kind of sticking out, maybe one big one right out the side of this head, right there. Call that one good. Just kind of just creeping over the side of the hill. So she's kind of like a necromancer at this point, which is cool. So now that I've kind of got this stuff figured out, I look at the drawing, I'm like, okay, what? What could I add to this? Um, where do I need, where do I have space? What do I want to do to make it interesting? Um, and what I think I'm going to do is, so this hand's kind of out like this. She's got her fingers bent. These two fingers are out. I'm going to do like a magic dagger. So she's got this kind of dagger and maybe it's her magic weapon. She's got, and it'll balance the side of the drawing out. I wanted some height somewhere. And so I feel like having this floating dagger above her hand um, will add kind of a cool interest to this. And we'll do like a, make it look evil, add like a skull on the hilt. It's carved in there. Give it these wispy, Kind of horns that come off it kind of organic maybe a spike that sticks out there comes 
up to a point. So it'll be kind of like a short sword type dagger. There we go. I uh, gotta say that's pretty sweet. Turned out the way I wanted it. And for like um, wrappings on handles and stuff, I tend to do little squigglies like that. Again, when I start rendering it, I'll add little dark sections like this. Um, I, journal, I, I sometimes like to add like uh, stuff in the background, like in the other one I added the roots and things like that. Um, but I actually think for this one, I might do some smoke. I'm not sure, really light cross hatching in the back. But now it's time to start really flushing this thing out and rendering it. Um, got all the line work in. Now it's time to make these guys kind of come to life and all that add all that cross hatching. So I'm gonna start adding in some real dark areas, uh, like basically this guy's chest cavity, things like that, anywhere where I know I'm gonna want some contrast. Um, just fill in stuff in, the nuanced stuff. So like this. I added the real darks in and now I can add kind of a layer, like a mid-tone layer to push all those areas that I don't want stark white. So things that I, I'll think about, what do I want stark white? I want her legs, her face really white, um, just to add contrast. I want this shoulder piece to be really white. In fact, I'm gonna take my jelly roller pen and kind of clean this up because this got a little bit um, you know, because I do want this to be like a white fur kind of shoulder piece. So I'm going to knock down some of these little lines. I might add them back in after I do this, um, like a light cross hatching or something to this. But for now, I want this to be really noticeable that it's not the same as the rest of it. And it might take a few layers to get some of those reds to drop back. Okay, so now I'm gonna start rendering her where I know there's, um, actually I'm gonna take a nice light layer similar to what I did on these things and just fill this whole top piece in. I know I don't want any stark white. And so for me on this is I'm trying to get these lines as evenly spaced as I can, just by hand. I think it adds a really cool texture when you're doing ballpoint pen. And then it also helps you control your value range. So filling that all in, you can see I have a nice value on that. Now let's do the same thing to this up here. Now I might end up going much darker on these, but I'm just building up my, my layers. And I feel like this is also it when you're blocking stuff in like this, it really helps the drawing start to kind of take form. Um, you can see the shapes a little better because there's so much more contrast between the stark white paper when you start blocking in some colors or some values, I should say, not colors, since it's all one color. I'm th keeping in mind the shape of all the stuff that I'm doing. Um, so you can see the bottom of the breast here is getting a little bit darker and I want that. I want, you know, cause that's the bottom part of a cylinder or a circle. Um, and it's gonna be darker than the top. The top is where the light is gonna hit. Now, I've been going one direction on my shading where I want it darker. I'm gonna go the opposite direction. 
Add some cross hatching on the rib cage over here. So you've got her, the top of her ribs right here and it kind of sinks down. Now I'm gonna do a little bit more. I don't want this to get close to this because these are gonna be two different materials and I don't want all of it to just be the same value. So I wanna keep this one lighter, but I still also want to have shape in it as well. So it's about, you know, controlling, thinking about the, the shadows on or something, but also the material it's made out of. So these shorts she has on, I'm gonna kind of match this top up here as far as the value goes. Now, interesting thing on this one is I used a center point and kind of came out from it. Now I can come up from the kind of crotch area where it's a little bit darker and cross hatch up. So I have a nice value change. And you, the thing is, is with this, you've got another level with the big pins as far as getting really dark and not cross hatching, but actually shading similarly uh, to the way you would shade, shade with a pencil. That's the beauty of the big pins, I feel like. The ink doesn't come out so like fast and in big globs to where you can't really get light value. That's what really makes these big pen drawings pop is that really subtle uh, value change that you can get there. So the leg kind of, I have to be really careful not to get too dark on the leg because I want that to be a nice bright contrast between the rest of her outfit. This leg kind of drops behind the other one. So I'm just adding a little bit more shading to that leg. So sometimes I'll come in and darken a side of the figure that I know is just kind of in shadow. And that helps, you know, define some of the outlines a little bit and gives weight to areas that are in shadow. Define the clothing a little bit. So this arm over here, I'm going to go back through and do a light texture to it all. But then knowing that this back part of the arm is really dark, it's kind of hidden from everything. And again, I'm careful not to over darken to where I lose the details of these bandages kind of things that are on her. This arm, same deal. But this over here is pretty shadowed so I can get pretty dark with that. Where I gotta be very careful is on the face. I like the face at this time, so I don't wanna get too dark um, or add any extreme you know, value to the eyes or anything that's gonna make her not look pretty. So I gotta watch that. And sometimes I get to a point where I'll look at the whole drawing and be like, oh, I think she should have really dark hair actually. So I'll go real dark on her hair. And I might do that on this one, but I'm not there yet. I haven't made that choice yet. Because once I go super dark, I can't go back. So. So I always do shadows where the eyes are kind of sunken in. She's kind of a bad guy, so she can have a little bit more um, texture on her face. Might help her look a little bit weathered. A little bit of shadow on her lip to make that kind of come out a little better. 
So I'm going to do some rendering on these lower guys and you guys can see kind of how I deal with um, adding detail while I render uh, to these guys. It's really about like finding edges, I think, and breaking up the space, adding contrast. And I kind of just, as I darken things, um, I kind of just let the form kind of, I don't know, come to the surface, I guess, a little bit. It's really, it's this is a really fun um, type of rendering on like creatures like this. Probably my favorite, one of my favorite ways to draw, um, just because it is just about finding cool shapes and things like that in uh, the little bit of line work you have there these little rib things that kind of curve around. Um, those are really cool. Like I saw those just kind of like, you know that exercise where you uh, make some scribbles and then kind of find something in it? Well, it's like that, but I mean, you, you know the form that you're dealing with. So it's, it's kind of more about abstract shapes finding those. So I've kind of got this kind of weird rib cage kind of going on underneath this guy. Uh, but now I'm going to add some value to or shadows to this. So his underside, the underside of him is going to be very dark. Uh, I don't want to go all the way dark though, because I want contrast like in these holes that kind of go inside of him. So I'll just kind of do some line shading like this and uh, darken it as I kind of need it. So there should be no total white on the right side of this guy at all. I might leave some white on this side of him as like real hot highlights. Um, since I'm not adding color or anything like that, keeping those whites in there, uh, it's pretty necessary to make sure I have a good amount of contrast. So, and then also in parts like the the surface of this guy, I'm gonna add some some scribbles, uh, some textures, things like that, because I want this to look really organic, uh, scuffed up bone, things like that. These holes in his nose need to be very dark. But you can already see on this guy, it's already starting to tape, take shape. And so when I start to do this, I'll see things like this right here that I just uh, shaded in. This tucks into his jaw. So it goes into his skull and maybe loops around or something like that. And so that's why I kind of added shadow there. But I didn't realize that until the moment I added it. I mean, I kind of saw it, but there was no plan for that. It's all about kind of seeing those things as they develop, I guess. So this is gonna be some kind of skin, maybe some fur or something like that. That's kind of like dripping off this guy or molting off of him. Again, remembering that this is the underside of him. His body kind of dips back into his legs and stuff. Now there are parts where like this leg that kind of drops back back here uh, just so I don't lose that shape and accidentally shade in something in here when I'm adding detail because that does happen to me sometimes. I'll uh, block in some colors. The other thing too is where I want more detail to happen, I don't want it everywhere. I don't want detail just so overwhelming that you don't know where to look on the drawing. Um, so keeping that in mind as far as, you know, things like this. I don't mind actually just having some legs or something that kind of drop into the background be not detailed a whole lot. And that'll help me draw focus to like the main characters and then parts that I want to be focal points like his face. His face is pretty cool. So I want that to be more of the focus than like this back leg over here.
So I'm kind of liking the way that's turning. Um, as far as like seeing shapes, so his belly is like basically a ball. So it's a big circle, kind of loops down, um, goes around to his back over here. But I know since you, like most of you have probably done the exercise where you shade a ball or shade a round object, like it's pretty, once you start seeing things as basic, simple shapes, then shading that as a ball isn't too hard. However, sometimes get, things get a little bit more complex when, like for instance, yeah, it's a ball, but he's gonna get some shadow from this rib cage that kind of hovers above the top of it. So even though it's a ball and light's coming from this direction, um, and this is gonna be the darkest part of it, a lot of this is still blocked in shadow because light can't reach it. On this leg, I'm gonna have this kind of come around like this actually. And this will be more of his hip over here. And that's where that rib cage kind of tucks into the belly right there. I'm gonna darken this in here. I'm gonna darken this line um, to help define his bony arm a little bit better. That's his elbow right in there. And the big pens really shade Really, I mean, that's the beauty of the big pens, like I said before, they really can shade like a pencil. Um, it takes some work, obviously, getting used to it. Uh, and, you know, perfecting your skill in shading. I will say that's one thing I've always been pretty good at, even with pencils, is just, and it's because I started doing that from such a young age, is just rendering and having good control over my pencils. That arm's kind of stiff, just sticking down right there. It's kind of weird. So this arm over here, I'm gonna do some braces. So it's kind of funky how it's kind of coming out like all awkward over here. Um, so I'm gonna have like some pieces of him kind of sticking into his rib cage over here that kind of hold this arm out like all awkwardly. Like these things probably aren't super great at moving. I mean, they're pieced together um, by weird magic. So, uh, it's kind of just, you know, a hodgepodge of pieces type character. I'm gonna get some pointy fingers, make him look a little bit scary. Adding some pieces like this with just simple line work too. This tatters, tattered stuff over here. Um, it's a nice contrast too. Like just keeping things real thin. Uh, you've got these really, you know, bold, strong lines going through here. And that's a nice contrast. It's just wispy little line work that's happening in there. Okay, so now I've got things a little bit rendered out. Um, and I can work this over as much as I want as far as just fine tuning values and things like that. Um, so eventually it becomes a, you know, do, do I feel I've taken it far enough or maybe even, do I even want to work on this anymore? Um, and sometimes I might even work on drawings for like, I don't know, a month. I'll just reopen my sketchbook and just start randomly sketching on it one day. Um, Cause drawings like this, I feel like you can just fine tune forever. Uh, which is fun sometimes. So, but right now I'm going to finish this thing up with some uh, bandages kind of coming off of her. Uh, so I actually had a cool idea that I didn't do because I didn't think of it in time, but basically may like incorporate bandages into these guys. Like she has these magic bandages and that's how she binds things together. Uh, that would be kind of cool um, for a character, I think. 
So I wish I had thought of that ahead of time. I could probably still do it, but it would definitely take some, a lot of work. So uh, maybe next time, maybe I'll do it with a character in the future. But uh, so I'm just gonna have some, a few bandages kind of like floating down here, kind of tying in her to these guys a little bit. And for the bandages, I'm just twisting them in space so they're not just obviously squares. They get real thin where the bandage is basically turning towards you. It's kind of neat. So now I'm gonna add some background stuff. Um, and for this, uh, I feel like I wanna tie in some kind of background illustration on here. A lot of times what I'll do is all really lightly. I don't want to have any hard lines on this. Just really with a light hand kind of pull up some rocks, some things like that behind her. I might do a little bit of light shading to give them some form back here. I think it would be cool to have like maybe some like stone mounds, maybe like halters or something. It'd be kind of cool, kind of coming up over here. Like maybe the person who's she's walking towards has accidentally entered her uh, domain as far as her cemetery or something like that. And she's like some kind of medieval witch. So I'll do like a post that kind of comes up like this and I don't want it to be a cross because I just feel like that's overplayed a little bit so let's do like a weird like I don't know maybe it's like a viking thing or something so that's kind of, kind of everything's pointing to the top some kind of top thing up here would be kind of cool maybe, but it's pretty empty on the top half of this. This is definitely um, a triangle based uh, composition, which is very sturdy. And I did a drawing a while back that he was, it was a triangle, but at the base of him, like he was on this little piece of grass right here and it got real thin in the middle. And I feel like, you know, doing something like that with a character like this might have been a good idea um, just to give you a sense of uneasiness because a triangle composition is very stable. Um, and, you know, a drawing like this where there's creatures walking towards you, I think would have been served really well by doing some kind of uneasy, just maybe a slight tilt to things type of composition and it would have made the viewer feel um, less at ease and maybe feel a little bit of that tension that the drawing is kind of capturing. Um, fortunately, I didn't think of that soon enough, but I will keep it in mind for the next time. Uh, so this video is definitely a longer format than my daily sketches. That's why uh, this one's coming out on Friday and I didn't do a video on Thursday because I uh, was working on this the whole time. And as far as, you know, cutting stuff out of these videos, you know, part, part of that is to keep it shorter for you guys so you can handle watching. I don't want, you know, to have to upload a two hour video. And the other part of it is uh, having to talk while I'm drawing is fine for sure. I enjoy, I don't mind doing that at all. Um, to some degree, but I still draw to enjoy myself. And sometimes I just want to relax and draw. And actually doing this kind of drawing where I'm just shading things in and filling space is very uh, enjoyable for me. So I also want to make sure I'm taking the time to actually enjoy the art I'm doing, uh, enjoy the time I'm spending doing it and relaxing, because it is very relaxing.
So part of that is me just filling stuff in. So I'm gonna probably work on this for a little bit longer and uh, I'll show you guys the finished product. Okay, so this is the finished illustration. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. Uh, I mean, there's definitely a few things I would change, but this is nothing but Big Pen in my imagination, which is probably my favorite way to draw. Um, uh, this is my most enjoyable way of drawing too, uh, just keeping it simple. Adding a little bit more contrast might be kind of fun down the road. Uh, but yeah, so let me know what you guys think of this type of video. Um, a lot of you were requesting uh, longer format videos uh, versus the 20 minute ones I was doing. And I also want to do more finished artwork like this. I don't always want to do just 20 minute uh, drawings. So I think I will definitely be doing these on the regular. Um, if you have any suggestions on how I'm doing these, if you'd like to just see time lapse um, versus me talking while I actually draw it in real time, uh, let me know. But yeah, pretty happy with the way this turned out. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching guys. Hope you liked the video. And if you're not subscribed and seeing my channel for the first time, I definitely would appreciate the subscribe. And if you are following my channel, and you're enjoying my stuff, um, if you give me a share to anybody you might think would be interested, that always helps me as well. So I will catch you guys later. Thanks. Bye.